happy to see to be here. I want to talk about simulating quantum service on classical hardware, in this case, well, using FPGA. I will explain the meantime what is the meaning of FPGA. I think that's one of you already know about it, but well. Okay, perfect. Let's first talk about programming in hardware. How you programming in hardware? Commonly, we usually programming in software that are commonly the most easy way to, to do it. But first, I want to talk about feature circuits. In this case, in feature circuit, we have some inputs and some outputs. And one, one circuit implementation, but it's fixed. I cannot change the internal architecture of the, of the circuit. In this case, well, suppose that we have so and gate. And well, we, I can choose if, if use the hull of the inputs or the hull of the output, but, but I can only choose in terms of inputs and outputs, but I cannot change the internal architecture of the, of the circuit itself. Well, some examples, um, very naive examples, are the calculator. In this case, we have some inputs that are the bottoms, like numbers and operation, and one only output, that is the LCD screen that you can choose, that you can see the, the result of your operation, right? That is a common example about circuit, a physical circuit that I can, well, I can internally change the if I plug in, but that's the idea. It's a physical circuit in this case. Another example for for most of you, I think uh, know the Arduino Uno. Arduino Uno is a very tiny platform, very cheap that, that can be allowed every engineer or very science to, to test some circuits or test some projects in some cases. In the Arduino Uno, we have some inputs and some outputs, digital inputs, digital outputs, and analog inputs and analog outputs to measure and to do very useful applications. You can see in YouTube that, that this, this style of Arduino or have very interesting projects actually. So, but I cannot change, I can change the internal, the internal architecture of the Arduino Uno in this case. It's only if it's have some modules, but I cannot change it. Well, now talk about a not unfit set circuits. In this case, we have some similar architecture for the feature circuit. We have some inputs and some outputs, ports, but in this case, I can program in the internal architecture or on the circuit. I can choose if I want only NAND gate or the SOR gate instead of, well, OR gate in this case, but I can choose the internal architecture of that. Well, a common example, is the FPGA, it's a field programming gate array. Some of you maybe know the FPGA. I, 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 I will show a physical picture of the FPGA, it's pretty similar, like at the Arduino Uno, but I have some more modules do the, do the complexity of the circuit in this case. But I cannot change, I can, I can show that picture. I want to show this picture that is most intuitive intuitive in some way. I have some logic blocks and input output blocks and one interconnection that is useful to connect some logical blocks with the input blocks. I want to I want to say, well, I want to do an AND gate to the output block three or four or something like that. I want the, op, the input can be a digital or inclusive analog input and the output as well can be. Well, after that, I want to talk about the Toffoli gate because Toffoli gate is an is Ipsel, is a useful gate to simulate the classical the classical circuit and implementation. Toffoli gate can be used like an AND gate and like an OR gate in this case, and it is is very useful and very easy to simulate. In, in a classical in a classical way, the Toffoli gate because it's only a sort a sort operation. We have some inputs and the output is the same input plus the sort operation with, with the inputs. You know, or most of you know the operation of the Toffoli gate. So I want to program in the Toffoli gate in this case in the SPGA. 
what is the idea? The idea is to, with the Toffoli gate, we can, we can simulate any zip in this case with the programmable architecture of the FPGA. For this example, uh, for this presentation, I went to programming the, this special architecture. Some of you well maybe know the architecture that is here in the circuit, it's a quorum full adder. And the idea is to program in this type of circuit in the FPGA. We are programming the four layer of the Toffoli gate, programming the FPGA, and with the Hadamard gate, we have some counters that is actually maybe similar with the with the behavior of the Hadamard gate in this case and the circuit itself. To remember, we measure only the sum, the sum and the carry output in this case, only two measure to measure the qubits in this case. Well, we expect that we have this type of behavior in the circuit. I, I will choose in a in a big time why this outcome is better, right? Well, this is the simulation in the FPGA that we can that we can see what is the behavior of the circuit. In this case, we have well, I maybe I can put okay, but well, I can this us all of this is all the operation and the probability of each operation in this case in a quantum circuit. And also we have if if I zoom all of this, we have some probabilities for each state. Obviously, the state one one is only one way because only to have one one we have three one one in this case. So we have only way to to measure this probability. In the probability, in this case, we were showing the timeline, a timeline in the, in the simulation, and we can see all these outcomes. Well, the idea is if, if, I, if I zoom all of these probabilities, of, in, the, in some case, we have the 100% probability, probabilities for the, for the circuits. Is, well, it's some way to see the circuits and to prove some, some sort of circuit that we can use with the Foley gates and the Hadamard gates. Um, well, to summarize, I use a way to simulate quantum circuits, a very intuitive way. Um, well, I hope that we can scale in this, this type of circuits and not only use the Toffoli gate and instead using other, other, other gates to be universal in some way. Uh, well, let's see how this works. Uh, well, thank you. This is my presentation. Thank you, Kevin, for the talk. Uh, there's a question in chat for you from Kevin. Okay, what can be quantum circuit B? How many qubits we step? Well, it's hardware. Hardware is extremely high, deep in this case, but the limit is with the Hadamard gates. How I mentioned, the Hadamard gates is using with a counter. If I if I sum or add more Hadamard gates, the counter is exponentially grow. That is the problem in this in this setup. But the advantage is that we can, in some way, parallelize the the circuit to be more 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 stable and be more short the process of the of the circuit. That is a proof of extremely and the extremely circuits that are currently studied. How does classical FPGA molecular differentiate itself for a quantum computer? Well, the idea is the, the FPGA, classically, obviously, is, is actually classical. In this case, we, we use the classical part to do quantum parts, but it's extremely, we have no special characteristics of the quantum setup because we have no interference besides there is a deterministic output. In the quantum part, we have the undeterministic output. That is what I can say about, about it. Okay. 
how the standard case as implemented in FCGA using in in both IPs or loops. Well, I know I well sorry, but I don't understand why is IPs are or loops, but I can I can tell about how the standard gate are implemented in FPGA. We have in this case we have only the topology gate that is usually equivalent to the C node gate in a in a classical setup in this case. And the idea is to can simulate actually the the other universal set of gates. When we can simulate this the universal set of gates, we can compare to the to the quantum part to to see what is better in some cases and um, for what architecture can be more 